Hi, my name is Antoine from TSM, and this is my basic jungle guide to Gregus. His jungle is alright because you you will still have like four or five hundred health after your first clear, which makes you able to gank. But also on the other hand, he doesn't jungle clear as fast as some of the other junglers, such as Sajirani, and therefore I only give him the score seven out of ten in jungle clear. But when it comes to ganking in solo queue, he, his ganks are really really strong. Like at level three, his gank is really strong because you can body slam flash. So you you will hit him with body slam like every single time, and then you can follow up with a slow with your barrel roll, and that's why it's really really hard to avoid the ganks. And if you've ganked him once and you burn flash, but you didn't kill him, the second you hit level six, you can just gank him again with body slam ultimate, and there's no way you can escape. So therefore, I give him eight out of ten in ganking. And in solo queue, I think Gragas is one of the strongest junglers right now because both his ganking and jungle clear is like really high. And when you're full tank, you still do a lot of lot of damage because of your W. So on Gragas blue side, always start on Grump because your Budlin will normally want to do the golems, and therefore it's just better for you to start on Grump and have your jungle leash for you. And um, after that I do blue because you want to get some mana back and then after that you can do red and then after red you will still have like five or four, 400, 500 health and then you, if you do scuttle afterwards you'll be at like 600, 700 health and you'll have vision for your team in the in the river and then because you're in the river it's really easy for you to gain your bottom mid lane if the opportunity arises and therefore I use this jungle path. So on purple side of Greg's jungle, you basically do the same thing because you still want your bot lane to have Grump for themselves, so you start on golems, so you can get a leash from your top lane, and after golems, you do red, and then after red, you do blue, and then again, you'll have the gang pressure when you do Scarlet number, like in the river, and some of the lanes are always pushing in solo queue, like either mid lane or bot lane will 90% of the time push, so there should be opportunities for you to gank. So on Gregus I do Armor Quince, then I do Health Scaling Yellows, and then I do Medicus Blues if we're against AP, either if we're against AP Jungle or we're against either AP Mid and AP Top. And if they don't have those scenarios, then I would do 5% cooldown reduction instead of most of my magic resist. And then I do Attack Speed and Reds because I want to make sure that my first clear is faster than if I did, like for example, Magic Penetration because that would make my clear slower. On Gregus, I do 21.90 masteries because I want to have the early pressure in the game. So you want to be able to clear faster, and you also want to have the gang setups where you do more damage. So if you did 9.21.0, you would not clear as fast, but you would be tankier later in the game. But I, I value early game higher than late game. So on Gregus, I either start with putting a point in either Q or W, and I do W if I start on Grump, and I do Q if I start on Golems, because on Golems, it's nice to have the AoE from the Q, and on Grump, it's nice to have the reduced damage plus more damage to one target with W. So I start, if, let's say, blue side, I start with W because I start on Grump, then I do Q after to kill blue faster, and then I do E as number 3, and then after first rotation I do Q max into W second max. On Gregus I always do Trailblazer Cinderhulk first item, and after that I tend to just get the first boot, and then after that I will always go into the Right Risk Glory, because it's really really strong on Gregus, and it gives you health, mana, and the speed up, which is really really nice for ganking and chasing down your enemies. And after that, if they have a lot of AD damage, I do Frozen Heart to get the extra um, armor plus cooldown reduction. And if they don't have that much AD but like more AP, then I do Locket because it also gives cooldown reduction and magic resistant health. And I always do like cool cooldown reduction builds because cooldown is really, really strong in Gragas to have your E up and your Q up faster so you can be really strong in team fights. And after. The either Frozen Heart or Logget, depending on the com, then I do the other items. So if I do Frozen Heart first, I do Logget second. And after that, I normally upgrade my boots to Merc Threads. Okay, so there's only one scenario where, where I don't do Merc Threads, and that's if they have full AD composition, and then I do Ninja Tab Eyes. But if they have, like, one AP damage threat or something, then I always want to do Merc Threads because of the tenacity. And after that, I tend to do a Fawn Mail because... The AD carry from the enemy team will always do a lot of damage, like because we are really far into the late game when you get your four, four mil. So you you'll be able to deal with that guy way easier when you have the four mil because he he literally can't kill you. You can easily one one him when you get your four mil spike. 
So when you're getting on Gregus, you normally want to gang the lanes that are pushing towards your side of the map because then they are in danger of getting ganks because like they're closer to your turret. So when you gang them, they'll have to run like a long way to get back to their own turret. So you have a lot of time to like kill the enemy. And I normally try to gang a little free where you start off with body slam into them and then you can Q right after to slow them down and then W to do a lot of damage and it's a really easy rotation and the body slam is really easy to hit and if you know the guy doesn't have flash you can always body slam and then in the last second of your body slam you can flash and then you will still hit them with the body slam damage plus knock them up and after level 6 where you have your ultimate if you know that a guy doesn't have flash on the enemy team like let's say the mid laner is Orianna and you ganked him at level 4 and he burned flash but you didn't kill him then when you hit level 6 you can just body slam into him and ulti him back into your own teammate like your mid laner and then he'll die like every single time unless you get counter gang and even if you get counter gang you should be able to win the 2 versus 2 because he should die instantly and that's why I think Greg is like a really strong jungler because the level 6 ganks they like you can't even dodge the ganks if you don't have flash up when you're team fighting with Greg, you want to make sure that you can like keep your AD carry safe. And if you like, okay, let's say a team where you have Kogmo and they have, let's say, Vayne or whatever, and you, if you can protect your AD carry, he will most likely be able to do more damage to you, the enemy team. And if you see a scenario where the their AD carry or their mid lane is really up in front, then you can always go for the body slam into them, ult them back to your team. But normally you want to hold your ultimate as long as possible. And when you see an opportunity where you can like ultimate either the entire enemy team back and kill that one guy who's in front or you can ultimate one of their carries into your team that's like what you want to do in every single scenario and if you if you press your ultimate early and you miss everyone it's, it's a really huge thing because if you don't use your ultimate at all they're still really afraid of the ultimate the entire time and therefore they'll not be able to do as much damage because it's just like a huge threat that they have to deal with even if you're not even using the ultimate so when you're playing solo queue and you see like your team, if they pick a really strong support such as Fresh and all this, it's really nice to pick Gragas because of the ganking pressure. Because like if Fresh either hooks a guy or Nolus hooks a guy and you can follow up with Gragas, they should be dead every single time. And also with Fresh, you, they can e also do the Lancing gang where they lance on you into the team. You can also them back into your Fresh. And it's just really easy to gank them. And also, I don't know if there's too many people playing Yasuo right now, but Gragas and Yasuo is like a really deadly comp because your ultimate knocks them up and your body slam knocks them up and he can follow up with his ultimate and they should die every single time that happens. So a really cool thing you can do with Gragas is that you can press your body slam, you can Q, you can barrel while you're in your body slam, which is like you can do EQ and it's like really fast animation because like I would say that like body slam you should be able to buy something Q afterwards but not like in your body slam animation because I feel like it's really really strong and you can get a lot of burst out by doing that. Thanks for watching this guide. Make sure to check out my guy all the guys here at lolclass.com and follow me on Twitter, Sensor and LOL.